So this is a typical kind of process that I do um, for most for my monthly magazine illustrations, uh, where I find some some reference photos and use don't necessarily use them for positioning of the figure, but more or less to get uh, an idea of uh, a way to caricaturize the face, uh, figure out the overall outer outer shape of the face, uh, the different planes, how the nose is in relation to the to the eyes, all this kind of stuff. A lot of just kind of uh, a lot of searching and uh, discovery to try to figure this character out. Uh, in this case. It's basically I'm using kind of the, his facial expression uh, and his body uh, gesture, but more more of anything is since he's got all this kind of uh, leather accoutrement uh, and axe and all this kind of stuff, just to try to get all the all the details right to try to sell this thing. Um, so basically, you can see that I don't go and actually have a uh, an under skeleton under the entire thing because this is basically uh, you know for for the intents of this. Uh, demonstration it's more of just capturing the likeness of the figure not necessarily um, doing something different than the than the, uh, the photograph is already kind of insinuating so it's it's easier for me to kind of start at the head because that's the most difficult place when you're trying to do a caricature unless it's somebody that's has an incredibly uh, recognizable body shape or something but um, so this instance I go straight for the head and then kind of work my way from there um, you know you can see how I did really kind of a, a loose skeleton as far as the uh, the arm positioning and all that stuff which is pretty close to being right but uh, as you'll see right here I actually you know get rid of this huge hunk of hair just because it doesn't uh, work with the kind of the, the flow of what I kind of established before uh, but at this stage everything's quite rough and uh, actually the 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 pencil is pretty worn down at this point I don't necessarily concern myself with having a super sharp uh, pencil because this is more kind of exploratory um, so this instead of belaboring watching every single thing that I did on that uh, on the penciling this is basically the final pencils. This is typically what I would, uh, if I was going to be doing this on Bristol for a comic page, I would typically put this in the light box, tighten up the pencils a little bit more because at this at this stage the the face looks pretty rough, uh, especially from this this vantage point. You don't necessarily see the the right lines. Um, luckily, I could kind of uh, <laughs> penetrate through the the wrong ones and, and pick out the the right ones when I go to ink. Uh, but this was kind of a different experience to. This is something I've actually done recently here is that is just do these really quick 15 minute um, kind of caricature studies of, of different, you know, rock musicians or metal musicians or whatever. Uh, and it's cool just to be able to knock everything right out. I don't have to worry about going to Lightbox. I don't have to use the blue line pencil and then I have to worry about seeing that through. And with these um, with the, the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, which I'm using here, it's really not uh, it, it's pretty, pretty. Um, what would you say color safe or color fast or it basically it'll stay uh after you even if you erase it you know over the top of it which typically like a lot of indie inks will actually resist and come off the paper a little bit um uh, if you've um if you erase over the top of them that's kind of why i adopted using blue lines um but this kind of is, is especially since this isn't necessarily something that's going to be sold it's just done on cheap bond paper you know typing paper um i i don't really have to worry about it it's purely just to get that final um, image that I can scan in and then use for for anything else. Uh, another interesting thing about the brush pen, uh, at least this particular model, the Pentel Pocket brush pen, um, it's got a bunch of different, a, a lot of kind of dry brush effects or even pseudo kind of dry brush effects. Um, things like I'm doing, um, just some typical feathering here, like you could do with a um, a, a typical sable brush or something. Um, but but this I find has a, a really good. Uh, you know, for for doing like hair, doing things that have some there, there's a different um, weight to the lines. There's a different kind of um, uh, a way to reflect light sources really convincingly with these without necessarily having to get really detailed. You, you can give the illusion that you've put a lot of detail into this without necessarily having to nitpick over the top. Because look how I mean, I'm, obviously I'm not going this quickly in real life, but uh, going quite quickly over the top of this thing and not really having to worry about you know really finessing it too much. Um, I think these these different tools kind of give you the give you a little bit of, of a leeway to to kind of just worry about the drawing itself and not have to worry about how you're rendering this line. Uh, of course, the brush does take a little bit of getting used to, but uh, as far as the kind of um, I think focus and concentration you need when you're using like a, a sable brush, um, this can kind of give you a little bit more room just to play. Now, right there, that was some of the. It, it kind of looks like feathering once you see the final drawing. You can kind of see it's more of, um, it's a feathering, but it's actually going from um, from a fairly wet brush to fairly light to kind of almost like a, a gradation effect.
And I find with uh, with this particular brush pen, I don't necessarily have to turn the page quite as much as I would uh, when I'm using uh, a typical sable brush. It's the tip is a little bit more forgiving; it never spiders out. So, and uh, now here I'm going in with a felt tip flare pen, just like a cheap one you get at a drugstore. And finally, going to using my Copic marker or Copic marker, however you pronounce it. Uh, this is something I've been really getting into a lot in the last couple of weeks. Um, picked this up at a local art store. And just with how quickly you can knock this out, um, and it's a much more, I would say, organic look than what I can typically do in Photoshop. I know some people are much more talented at uh, painting and things in Photoshop, um, but I find that this is just, it's so, it's so quick and it gets exactly the results I want, so why screw with anything else? Uh, and really, the kind of style I think of going here is almost something that it's almost trying to like reproduce what you could do on a mid-tone paper. Um, where you'd have, say, like a 50% gray piece of paper, and then you'd go over the top uh, with black and bring out your whites. I'm kind of doing it the opposite way, but that's kind of like the, the finished look and the, kind of the idea of what I'm doing here. And here's back with a brush pen. But you can see how this is something typically I would have done with a crow quill. And the, uh, the brush pen is pretty resilient as far as just kind of beating the hell out of it like I'm doing here, uh, just to give this kind of background texture that I'll eventually go over the top of with the... Uh, with a Copic marker and give it what it, what it ends up doing is basically making kind of like a mid tone for the paper and then it gives a, a slight kind of rim, uh, rim lighting around the outside um, that I really dig and uh, here we go watch this this is gonna be quick check this out Whew. but it's, it's kind of hard to tell here but you can actually uh, the marker kind of fades and bleeds together so you don't get any of those kind of like goofy marker lines at all so that is how I've been doing my sketches lately, and that's typically how I start doing uh, any of my monthly illustrations.